soccer, rugby league, you know, all these, they're badly run down. We've got pitches that are actually dirt after six weeks. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Look, I understand. Yeah. We work with local government in relation to local sporting grounds, of course, and in particular in the St George area. Yeah. If I could speak a little bit more broadly about playing field and open surfaces, one of the things I'm extremely worried about as a father of three boys is technology, mobile phone technology. As a parent, kids get on it and they don't get off it. And when you try and take it off them, it's like. I don't know, taking drugs off an addict or something. They're just extremely, extremely angry about it. And I think that this modern technology is designed to get young minds focused on a screen for hour after hour after hour. And it's only, it's a recent phenomenon. It hasn't, wasn't around when I was a kid. But organised sport's fantastic. But if I could call it disorganised sport, isn't around anymore. The idea that a kid could just say, I'm going to go ride my bike or I'll head down the park and kick a football. Now they go, where's my tablet, where's my device? And, they, and they're on it for hours, six, seven hours before you, you turn around. And I think, what is this doing to their young minds? It's such an, it's such an important part in the, in the way that the, a young brain starts to form together that are on these devices. I think one of the big problems is school fences. I know that sounds strange, but when I was a kid, you could go to the local public school and there was a sporting field, there was a basketball hoop, there was a big open ground that you could run on. Now they've got prison fences around them. And it's locked up something like 70% of the open space that used to be available to all of our communities. So I said to my wife's over there, I said to Anna, well, where would they go? The local Catholic schools Done up. The local public schools are even worse. Fences seven foot, eight foot high. And they've, and they've got playing fields that no one's using. They're just lying vacant all the time. So I think that we can lock up the actual school building facilities but open up this land so that people can kick a ball or throw a frisbee or have a picnic. I mean, it's your land. You own it. It's taxpayer land. It's crown land. But it's being locked up. So I think that's something that we need to look at and something that I'll push the government on uh, in, the, in the opening stages of, of Parliament. In relation to manufacturing, I've said it three or four times tonight. Go out to Lithgow, what do they talk about? Jobs. Yes. Go out to Broken Hill, what do they talk about? Jobs. Go up to the Hunter, talking about the coal industry and renewable energy. Mm. If you work in coal, you're thinking, what am I going to do? Mm. What's your jobs plan? Yes. This is the way for the Labor Party to get back in the game, explain to people where economic growth and opportunity will come from and what role the government will play, a Labor government, and ensuring that we can have a manufacturing sector in New South Wales. Yeah, because at the time we had the opportunity. We had kangaroo leather coming out from Opal. Uh, I mean, everybody had a job in the country. By going away, we ended up importing from India, you know, cheaper leather, which means it cut out the whole industry here and you know, we go through different stages to make sure, you know, it's ready for you to do. So hopefully, if we can drive those, and with all respect, I don't need the dollar to be 70 and 80. I'm not going to actually import anything at the moment or buy anything. I need to actually manufacture something where outside countries can actually look at it. Double my dollar, I can take it out, and that's what we want. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lee, what it means for the young people to stand up and act, and it was always, it has always started. With the Honourable Rock Whitman, the greatest Australian that ever lived, when he stood against the Vietnam, just Vietnam War. Also, when he went to China with his cabinet, all of them, and against the whole Western alliance. Nixon went crazy about it. He said, you brought the alliance of business because of that. And that was the greatest thing a true leader could ever do. And on the state government, you had the best example of Australia that ever had. In the honorable book, the late, the, 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 the late, uh, they have been the greatest example ever as a state leader. I mean, you have the, the, the ground 
under your feet yeah. and you have the ways they have treated the Australians to get the, to, the, the, to the ballot box. Yeah, I hear. So it is, yeah. and Gough Whitlam, God bless his soul, yeah, bless he soul. is the most initiative maker in the world. Yeah. He, he was pushed and shoved, <laughs> and the leadership of the Lab Labour Party used to get punched and kicked by the police, the, 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 the right wing idiots of the strength. That is right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. A chance for three more questions because it's uh, I know some people want to go and uh, so we need to wrap it up as well. So, okay. hungry, so what, what I'd say about that is thank you sir absolutely Gough Whitmer the king and titan of the party obviously huge shoes for anyone for any prospective leader yeah. of the Labour Party but it's it an initiative work. for all of us that we need to be as dynamic as forward thinking as courageous as the Whitmer so government the was time. I mean, I think Steve Kemper said to me once that uh, his father said to him, Goff would go on about multiculturalism and all the rest of it, speak about a, a rainbow of cultures inside Australia. And for the first time, Steve's dad, because Goff was the Prime Minister, for the first time, Steve's dad felt really Australian. That he didn't have to be white to be Australian. Yes. And that was Goff's legacy. That he was the one who stood up and said, we're all in this together. We're, we're a community. And we're Australians first. So, huge shoes to fill, sir. But it definitely, I mean, I don't think anyone can fill Bob Hawke or Gough Whitlam or Neville Rand's shoes. But we can follow in their trail. We can follow in their trail. Yeah. Yeah. regards to kids, you know, and uh, education. The old system used to work for the apprenticeship schemes, you know, um, going through TAFE. We're pushing all our kids into universities, which the whole system is focused. Hang on. This. But it's in the language as well that the Labour Party, or nobody uses. It's when children or kids or unions of a say, we're competing with China. We're competing, hang on. We should have been focused on being the Germany of Southeast Asia, <coughs> producing top end quality and turning our manufacturing into electronic engineers, so our people upskill to building the automation that made these things run. And we wouldn't have been in this taking a step back, always competing with China. Who cares about China? We are Germany of Southeast Asia, and we have be targeting all those markets. You know, that's the bottom line. Keep it simple. That kiss rule, I can be rude. Rude, I guess. You know that. Keep it simply stupid. Simple. Don't overthink it. Let the people thrive, the country thrive, or your state thrive. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let them thrive. Everything. Great, great. Spot on. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Um, I think you're, you're exactly right. I mean, particularly in relation to vocational education, Germany is huge on vocational education. It's basically free. If you want to retrain and move into another sector, the government pays for it. And they put a lot of the revenue that comes from being exposed to global markets back into their education systems. And you know why? They don't even consider it a cost. They consider it an investment. Because if you skill somebody up and they move into a new sector, they'll be paying taxes for the rest of their lives. They'll pay it back ten times over. And what the government's done to TAFE is a disgrace. So I keep I, the same message keeps coming back at me. Manufacturing jobs, what's the jobs plan? How will Labor compete in this 21st century? Yes, Don, yes. Um, you mentioned earlier about um, West Comics and uh, essentially overdevelopment and lots of more people needing uh, to get to places, particularly in Sydney. And so the, I, what, I, what I'd like to uh, talk about is that we need to articulate our public transport policy in a way that, because at the moment the government has grabbed 
you know, we're building metro here and we're building metro there and we're, we're doing, and it seems that in the last election campaign that Labor played a catch up with what we were sort of answering, they were, they were putting their, up what they were doing and we were sort of countering it. Yeah. We need a plan yeah. that, um, that articulates how we're going to deal with the growth, particularly yeah. the, growth, the growth in the city over the next 20 years and how uh, that, uh, as public, it has to be public transport, it has to be trains or metro or whatever. Can you sort of articulate yes. what you're seeing as the... Yes, the, yes. The, <laughs> Sure, absolutely. Well, the government's basically pursuing a plan to build a whole bunch of more toll roads. So Northern Beaches Tunnel, the F6, and whatever else they can squeeze in. There's no new public transport uh, lines that are being proposed by the New South Wales government other than the airport line, which is being funded by the Commonwealth. So it's all toll roads deep into the future. So we, in the Labor Party, need to explain where we will build lines and how we will pay for them. Because unfortunately, the public's very sceptical about New South Wales Labor and public transport. They don't think we're going to build it. So if we can come up with a plan for how we will fund public transport and where it will be built, I think we can get some credibility there. And then we can paint a plan or a vision for how Sydney will look under a Labor government. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes, one more question then. Final question. I'm hearing a lot about uh, recycling becoming a big issue in this country. I'm hearing nothing from anyone in public policy areas. Do you have any plans for that? As in recycling? As well, recycling China's not going to take it. Indonesia's not going to take it. They're sending it around. It's becoming a bit of a political football over there, yeah. I think. For yeah. them to say, hey, Australia, take rubbish back. Yeah. I'm yeah. hearing no one from the federal labor seems to have a plan. That sort of thing. Is there a plan? Is there something you can talk about there? To be really honest with you, I don't have a plan for it. I, I know that I know that China was saying to Australia for something like ten years, at some point we're not going to take this anymore. Yeah. And it seems like no one in this country decided to take it seriously. Yeah. And then one day they turned it off. Um, there's potentially opportunity to do it in Korea, but they burn it and use it for energy, so that might not be a solution, a, a, a very effective climate change solution. I, I need to look at it closer and, and come back to the details. I don't get the details to serve it. Thank you. Yeah. So, look, do you want to just quickly wrap up? And just say, look, thank you very much. Really appreciate you coming out. I really appreciate your time and your families to be part of this democratic process. Uh, look, I think. Regardless of which way you vote, Labor will be in good hands. We do have a focus on an energetic future, an energetic Labor Party that is focused on solutions. I don't think we can run around anymore saying, don't vote for the Liberals, don't vote for the Liberals. We have to start articulating why you should vote for us. Vote for us. I represent change. I represent generational change. I think we need a new way of doing things. And if you do vote for me, then I won't let you down. كما نرى صورة تذكارية في النهاية في قاعة الاجتماع مع السيد كريس مينز أعضاء حزب العمال كما كانت الأسئلة قيمة بالفعل والحضور كانوا متجاوبين والأستاذ كريس مينز كان متجاوب معهم ويطمح خيرا لحزب العمال ودم جديد لهذا الحزب لحتى يقدم ما هو خير وفعال لأبناء الجاليات الإثنية الموجودين أو الأستراليين اللي يعيشون المواطنين في أستراليا ألف شكر لهذه الدورة القيمة ألف شكر كنا مع شكرا نحن وين بريزنتا نبيع حدارة ومنتاج الأستاذ رافع العقابي ألف شكر للجميع كونوا معنا قريبا عبر شكرا نحن وين من أجمل الحلقات التي تقدم من أستراليا وألف شكر Do you say something? What do you say? Thank you? Yeah, you want to be something? You want to be a member of Labour Party? Um, yes. Yes, you like it? Can you stand up here? Yeah. Are you Chris's son? Yeah. No, I, not his son. Who? Who's your dad? Who's your dad? What is his name? What is his name? I'm Brett. Ah, good. Say, uh, uh, we wish all the best for Australia. God bless Australia. We wish all the best for Australia. Thank you. What's your name? Zane. Okay, Zane, my, my program. Shufu Nahna Wen. Say, Shufu Nahna Wen. Shufu. Thank you very much.